it was a pretty dour display. In, in some ways, Gab, they were lucky to get out of this with a point, weren't they? Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, what strikes me here about, about Scaloni is, all right, you had a poor performance in game one, but is this when you go when you, you throw out the baby with the bathwater? Uh, is, is this when, you know, you, I think you made four changes for this, but in reality, you know, much more far-reaching, going to going to four four two, bringing in uh, Lautaro and 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 the pole and, and and whatnot in midfield. Not bad players, but you can tell that there's no chemistry there yet. And uh, and, and and I think that sort of panic from the manager uh, clearly infects the players as well. Mm. You were talking about this, Paul, uh, before we came on the air. That the, the lack of any real cohesion or plan. Nothing. Nothing. I mean, look, look, he's the caretaker manager, we understand that. And, and it looks as though he's the caretaker manager. It looks as though nobody's listening to a word that he's saying mm. on the training ground. Because, look, when you've had a poor performance in the first game, you want to go out there, you want to try and put the plan together, some type of a plan. I was looking, and the one thing that we do when we look at the game, we say, OK, well, what system are they playing with mm. in, in possession, out of possession? It was so difficult to work out mm. because there were players that were lackadaisical. You could see with the goal, with the fast break, you, when you're in a position in the middle of the park, you always look at the play and say, if, I, if we lose possession here, are we going to be safe and sound? And the answer is no. Mm. They couldn't live with the pace of Almiron. And then the tracking from the middle of the park was non-existent. They were so lackadaisical, just jogging back as though it didn't really matter. So I, I thought, A, there was no plan, and B, that the players really looked as though they were not interested at all in this game. The, mm. the amazing thing for me is, as you look at this Argentina is you see this team... It's a decent team sheet, in all honesty, right? Mm -hmm. If you just look at the names. You've got who many believe is the best player on the planet, and, and, and I agree with that. And then after you that... After that, you're, not, you're just not quite sure what Argentina are doing tactically, what some of those individuals are trying to do around Lionel Messi. Um, from a, a tactical point of view, given what Paraguay did against Qatar in the, in the first game of, of, or their first game of, of the tournament, no real surprise to see them uh, get numbers behind the ball as they did. And, and at times, they, they had eight players in the box and just stifled any kind of creativity and, and um, smothered any space in, in the Argentina front line. Now you're looking for the midfield to do something, to add something, to, to somehow unlock this Paraguay defence. There was nobody there to do that. Mm -hmm. OK, then maybe you think, well, maybe the, this, this is a more defensive-minded midfield. Yet, somehow, they provided absolutely no protection mm -hmm. to, I want to say, a back four, but, but given the way that Scaloni set them up, be, between uh, Casco and Antaglia Fico on either side, just pushing way up and leaving the two centre-backs all alone, Again, just one big ball over the top. So asking Paraguay to do absolutely nothing in terms of their own creativity in, in, in getting the, the other side of Argentina. And lo and behold, you find yourself chasing as, as you did. It's, it's amazing to see, again, how poor these individuals are and how poor Argentina are tactically when you consider the names available to them. So, Gab, here they are with that one point from two games. Of course, there are plenty of instances in... Other world tournaments where teams have gone on to thrive after getting one point from the first two games and scraped through the group. All they have to do, let's face it, is beat Qatar and they're into the quarterfinals. Is, is that going to happen? Uh, yeah, although they could be... Yeah, I mean, I, because the two best third-paced teams uh, advance and there's only three groups, that's going to happen. But, um, I mean, certainly with, with Colombia playing Paraguay in, in the final game... Uh, you could have a situation where you know, Colombia is sure to first place. Um, you know, Argentina could finish third. <laughs> you know, I guess is, is what I'm driving at. And yeah, you know, you got to treat this now as as a knockout competition, and you have to win every game. And but I think you know we saw from Qatar um, really in in both games, even against Colombia when they lost, that you know this is a tough bunch. That they, they they can hang in there. You know, they they, they did very well in Asia, and uh, and and they did so for a reason. So. I wouldn't take anything for any of this for granted. And I just wonder, given how Scaloni panicked after the first game, I wonder what levels of panic he's going to reach, and panic and insecurity he's going to reach going into this one. 